when looking at rational functions, when we have some polynomial over some other polynomial, so something like ax plus b over cx plus d, what we have to realize is that now we have a horizontal asymptote as well. When we were looking at our original graph, we were looking at something like on the bottom of our, our function, we had x minus 2, so we knew that x couldn't equal 2. So that was always going to give us a horizontal asymptote. But when we have x over x, or like x squared over x squared, regardless of what the values of x are equal to, they're going to actually end up canceling each other out. So we're never going to be able to get to the point that when we cancel those two values out and we take their coefficients, we're never actually going to be able to get to that point. So in this case, we have 1x. So sorry, I'm looking at this equation here. We've got 1x over x minus 2. Well, when we look at small numbers, like if x and were both equal to 1, it would be 1 over 1 minus 2. And that negative 2 would matter. But when we start to look at numbers like if x were equal to negative a million, well, negative a million over negative a million and 2 is essentially the same thing. They're both going to give me 1. And that's just kind of, or sorry, they're both going to give you a round negative 1. That's just kind of like, that's a, such a small example. What if we go to a billion? What if we go to x is 10 to the exponent 48? where we have 48 zeros, or something even bigger than that. Well, now that negative 2 is not really mattering anymore. And then really what we're left with is x over x. Well, x over x is just going to be 1. So in this case, we're looking at the coefficients, and we're finding out what value we're getting infinitely close to. So what we're looking at here, whoops, what we're looking at here is a new asymptote. We're not actually getting to that number because we're getting rid of the x's, but we're getting infinitely close to that number. So to find the horizontal asymptote, we're dividing by the highest term and looking for the exponent. So what we're doing is um, divide each term by x, or the largest exponent value. What we actually want to do is look at look at the coefficient in front of the highest term x. In front of the highest um, exponent on x. So for example, if we had something like um, f at x equals 3x cubed minus x squared plus x over 2x cubed minus x. Well, a lot of people will say, like, what happens with these other terms? Okay. So what happens with those if we're just looking at the highest exponent? Well, really, again, if we look at small numbers like 10, 20, 30, when we square them, they're going to matter. But if I start making x so large, like close to infinity, if I start making x um, 1 times 10 to the 4,000, the cubed values are going to get so much bigger, so much faster, that the squared values and the singular x values are going to stop mattering, just like that 2 did in our first example. So we only ever have to assume that we're looking at the highest um, degree on the exponent of x. So in this case, if we were looking at this, our horizontal asymptote would be 3 over 2, because all of this has stopped mattering, and then we're just looking at the highest degree. To find our hor so that's our horizontal asymptote. To find vertical asymptote, we're setting the bottom of the expo or the fraction equal to zero. So the denominator equal to zero. To find the x intercept, you're making y zero. And to make y zero you set the top of the exponent equal to 0, or sorry, the top of the fraction. 
So the numerator. So set numerator to 0. Because the only way to make a fraction 0 is if the numerator is 0. So numerator equal to 0. And then finally, to find the y-intercept, make x equal 0. Or set x equal to 0. And then just solve. And that's typically the easiest one. It's, it's normally right in the question. Okay, so let's look at an example here. Um, oh, the end behaviors, you're looking at something going to infinity. Okay, so let's look at an example here. Um, if we wanted to find the vertical asymptotes, those are the easier ones. Those are the ones we've done before. We always look at the bottom of our fraction. So the vertical asymptotes here are x cannot equal 5 over 2. And it's negative because it was positive before. Okay, and that's the same all the way across there. Horizontal asymptotes, they're going to be a little bit different but in this example, we're actually just comparing similar graphs. So we know that they're actually almost all the same. So our horizontal asymptotes here are going to be, we're just looking at the x values and we're looking at the coefficients. So y is equal to a half. Okay, and again, it's the same all the way across. Now our x and y intercepts are a little bit different. The x intercept for the first one, we're making y equal to 0, so what we're doing is we're taking this fraction and setting the top equal to 0, because if y is equal to 0, then only the top of the fraction really has to be equal to 0. So in this case, our x-intercept is x equals 1, okay, so that's for the first one. For the second one, our x-intercept is x equals 5, and then for the third one, x equals 10. Now y-intercepts, we've got, we're setting y equal, or sorry, x equal to 0. So now in the first value, all of the x's go away. So we're left with y equals negative 1 over 5. The next one, the x's go away again. So we have negative 5 over 5, which is just negative 1. And then here, we have negative 10 over 5, which is negative 2. Okay, so when we're looking at these, if we were to graph them, what we're going to look at is we've got, so going back, um, we'll do A is X is equal, or X minus 1, so 2X plus 5. And then we'll change colors. And B was f of x, x minus 5 over 2x plus 5. And C of x is x minus 10 over 2x plus 5. Okay. So now what we have to start looking at is we can look at our end behaviors, but if we start putting points on the graph, the graph does become a little bit easier to see. So the first thing that we want to put on is um, I'm going to put the dotted line in, and this is the same for all the graphs. So I'm going to put x is, so we've got negative 2.5. Okay, so that's the same for all of them. That's x equals negative 5 over 2 or 2.5, okay? That's all of them have that same asymptote. Now, if we go back and we start looking at this blue graph, well, the blue graph was graph C. It has a horizontal, I guess they all have the same horizontal asymptote, so we can throw that in as well, of 1 half. So y equals 1 half. Now everything else, we've got to recognize that these are kind of like our um, reciprocal graphs. So they're going to have similar properties. So what we want to look at, so if I'm looking at the first graph, if we're looking at graph A, we've got our 
x-intercept as x equals 1, and our y-intercept is y is equal to negative 1 over 5. So what that means is the graph is going to be here at 1, and here at negative 1 over 5. So our graph is going to have this value. It's going to look something like that. But also, if we were at a value that's, let's say, going to negative infinity, Okay, now I'm not going to write out the whole in behaviors, but if I put negative infinity in over negative infinity, so we're looking at this top graph, you have to recognize that again, because we're talking about huge numbers, those are going to go away. Negative infinity over negative infinity. Well, that's going to be two positive numbers. Okay, and as I get bigger and bigger, because negative over negative becomes positive, the graph, as I get bigger and bigger and bigger, is going to well, it's going to keep getting more negative, so, or more positive. So what's happening here is if, as we get closer to our values, we're going to be able to see our graph doing this. And we're just going to connect those values. Okay, if we had negative 3, negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4, and then we would have it over... Um, negative 1. So it would be 4. It would be up here. Okay, and as I kept getting closer to that value, it's going to keep getting more positive. Okay, same thing here. As I keep getting further negative, it's going to keep getting closer and closer to the 1 half. Okay, from that positive side. Okay, so now let's look at the next one. So the next one, we've got x equals 5, right there, and then we've got, well, let's look. So we've got negative 1, so we're down here. So all that's happened is the graph is spaced out, and the graph would then space out up here. Okay. And then last but not least, we've got 10. And what did we have two? So again, looking like that. And we're going to look like that. Okay. So that's going to help us just by looking at all of our end behaviors. Um, some good questions to look at are these here. So I'm going to just erase that bottom part because I've changed the number slightly. But if you can find when you're graphing these, um, let's throw in a value at the top there. Let's call this 7. Okay, when you're graphing these, you should always start vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, x-intercept, y-intercept. So you can try these. I think this is a good place to start. It just gives you an idea of how to do things. First thing you're going to have to do, though, after you find the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote, or after you find the horizontal, I would start with the horizontal, you're going to have to factor out these bottoms. Okay, they're going to help you find... That second one, you don't have to factor. They're going to help you find vertical asymptotes. Okay, and sometimes there's two vertical asymptotes, and that's going to create a different, little bit different graph. Okay, so check as your graph is approaching all of your um, asymptotes, what is the graph doing? Okay, if I were to throw in another asymptote, let's say over here, well, these graphs might do something like this then. Okay, now obviously that doesn't look very good. But you have to make sure that you've checked what's happening as the graph is approaching. And that's how you're looking at the end behaviors. You're checking what does the graph equal to when it gets really, really close to x equals negative 5 over 2 from both the top and the bottom. Or what happens when y is getting really, really close to 1 half. So x is going to infinity or x is going to negative infinity. What is the graph actually equal to? Is it getting really close to 1 half? Is it getting really close to... Um, some other number, okay, zero. You need to check those values.